This is a video about Scoot Airlines. The ultra low cost subsidiary of Singapore Airlines has been growing rapidly in the last decade. A major reason for that are the stupendously cheap fares with 11 hour flights costing as little as $200. But how the hell do they manage to offer those prices? In this video, I will take a flight on Scoot to uncover their secret. The two star rated airline proudly calls itself the little sister of Singapore Airlines. However, cynics may rather describe them as the sister who somehow does not really reach expectations of their wealthy parents and moves out at 17 to live an alternative lifestyle, dyes its hair yellow, buys one of those ugly cats without hair and asks people for 2 euros at the train station to fund their ambitions to become a lead singer for a punk band. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? If you're doing some research on Scoot Airlines, you will find rather interesting stories. And by that, I don't only mean broken planes and technical faults, but also things like a male flight attendant secretly recording passengers in the lavatory and the airline refusing to accommodate a disabled child. To me, Singapore is this successful city-state that just screams futuristic utopia. Whether it's for tourism or business, Singapore is amazing. Also, they have the most powerful passport in the world, which says a lot. And the GDP per capita is higher than the one of their former colonizer, which is crazy. But budget travel on old planes isn't really something that fits into my sparkling and shiny image of this unique country. And also, how on earth can they fly for so cheap, with their hub being located in one of the most expensive cities on the planet? I mean, does their quality just suck or what? So I'm wondering if Scoot is really that bad, or if certain people are just once again exaggerating. I have flown on Scoot before, it was one of the first videos on this channel by the way, and to be honest, compared to other budget airlines, I found Scoot to be not too bad at all. I mean, you obviously can't compare them to Singapore Airlines, with tickets literally costing three times as much, but I wouldn't call them bad. However, I never had to deal with their customer service, which apparently is a very different story. Someone I know very well recently booked a flight with them, it got rescheduled to three days later, and meanwhile two weeks later, they are still selling their original flight on the website. Literally in the same week I heard from someone else that their Scoot flight also got rescheduled, which really f***ed up their travel plans with hotels and transportation already booked. But let's see how it feels to travel Scoot's long haul fleet for ourselves. Today's flight departs from the hub of Scoot Airlines, Singapore Changi Airport. Changi is one of the two airports serving the city, with the second one being the much smaller Singapore Selatar Airport. Oftentimes ranked as one of the best airports in the world, Singapore is especially known for its lush greenery and beautiful gardens, including the world's first butterfly garden, a sunflower garden, a cactus garden and this thing called the Jewel. Connected to the city by clean and reliable public transport, the Singapore Mass Rapid Transit, or short SMR team, is a fast and affordable way to get to the airport. Arriving at the airport, Scoot leaves from Terminal 1, which is interconnected to the terminals 2 and 3. If you have a priority pass, there are quite a few lounges to choose from, and today we're going for the Plaza Premium Lounge. It's conveniently located on level 3 of T1 and features a nice view down to the tarmac. While sitting at the lounge, enjoying my life and scrolling through social media, ironically I see this bloke who completely rethinks all his life's decisions after flying Scoot. Good. <laughs> My first and only Scoot flight was on an A321 and the plane looked new and modern. However, with their long haul fleet it might be a bit different. Since our flight leaves soon, I really want to make the most out of the remaining time at this lounge. Because the air on planes is really dry, it is super important that you stay hydrated. The best thing for your body is detox water with organic cucumbers, fresh lemons and avocado tree leaves because a healthy lifestyle really is the key to a happy life. And 
as a strict vegan, non-smoker, non-alcoholic, gluten-free, metrosexual, paleo fruitarian with a passion for tree hugging, I really am a living example of how you should live your life. Today's flight is operated on a 787 Dreamliner. The 787 is a wide-body airline manufactured by a company that is famous for always prioritizing safety and totally not hurting whistleblowers. From outside, it's already apparent that our aircraft has seen better days. Not really what I would call a Boeing I'd like to fly, or short, BILF. But it's the inner values that count, so let's step on board. While the crew is friendly and professional, the hard product does not look too fresh anymore. I mean, just have a look at the wings. When it comes to safety, I would rather have wings without paint than paint without wings, but it just does not look very trustworthy, even if this plane is probably just as safe as any 787 could be. And honestly, I really don't want to be hating, because recently I flew an airline called Super Jet and compared to them, flying on Scoot is basically a private jet experience. To inflate it further, blow into these tubes. Should there be a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will auto hard in your seat pocket contains additional information. What again sends out to me on this good flight is the crew's focus on safety. I rarely ever saw a crew checking the cabin twice and asking passengers to take off their headphones on any other airline than Scoot. Also, for the probably more than 200 flights I've taken in my life, this is the first time that I had to stow my fanny pack under the seat. It might be a bit exaggerated, but honestly, I prefer a crew that exceeds the safety requirements than one that neglects them. What would have been nice to have is an individual air vent, but I think that I will be able to perfectly survive even without it. 
When it comes to the legroom, we have 79 cm, which is actually more space than you get on most other budget airlines. And on the seat in front of us, we have a collection of things you can do on board. Most of them are obviously not free, like food or even charging your phone. And yeah, if they could, they would probably even install a fee to breathe the air or to use the life vest. But on the other hand, that's kind of what Scoot is all about, low fares for basic service. Most people flying Scoot don't do it for the experience, but to get from A to B without spending half a month's income. Some passengers may ask, why can't Scoot have free food? Why can't they have a more relaxed luggage policy? Why can't they have some more destinations? Yeah, dude, there is a Scoot who has those. It's called Singapore Airlines. So unless you're flying on routes like Krabi to Singapore, where Scoot is the only option, I think people really shouldn't complain too much about them being stingy with their onboard product when you bought a ticket for like two buttons and a medium-sized bag of fries. Yeah. Anyhow, let's head to the lavatory. Um, it's nothing special, it's a lavatory. What do you expect? But everything works despite looking a bit dated. It feels wrong to say that the 787 is dated because it was just launched the day before yesterday, right? Well, actually today's ride has been around for almost nine years already. Nevertheless, there is Wi-Fi on board all Scoot 787s and yes, you have to pay for it, obviously. There are several packages available and if you need to stay connected on board, I would recommend you to buy it in advance since on board it will be more expensive. Is that something you don't really need or is it too expensive for you? In that case, you can also connect to Scoot's digital in-flight portal for free where you will be able to look at a flight map, which is surprisingly interactive for lack of better words. Other than that, there are some games you can play. For a short two-hour flight, this is more than enough. However, I'm not sure if I would want to take them on a long-haul flight. One reason for that is that catering and beverages are not included. While normally I would just advise you to bring your own snacks, on Scoot I can't really do that. Why, you may ask now? Well, because the consumption of outside food and beverages is not allowed on board on all Scoot flights, which is a joke and obviously they only made that rule to force you to buy stuff which really isn't that great and honestly I can't think of any other airline on top of my head that prohibits outside food or even non-alcoholic drinks that for me really is a deal breaker for long-haul flights but the majority of Scoot flights are within East and Southeast Asia anyway despite having had plans to move on to a 787 only fleet in the past Maybe their strong regional network is the reason they scrapped their dreams of a standardized 787 fleet and even ordered some new members of the A320 family. Additionally, the Scoot family is expecting further offspring as by May 2024 they will start operating flights on E190s made by the Brazilian manufacturer Embraer. With this plane they will be able to make a profit on some new destinations with a smaller demand, primarily provincial cities in Malaysia and Thailand. So, maybe we will see Scoot growing even more in the future. This expansion reflects an ambition for growth, tapping into less competitive demand, flexible routes. On the flip side, the core of Scoot's operational success lies not just in route expansion, but also in its lean business model. And that's precisely the secret of Scoot. Short turnaround times, pressuring passengers into buying additional services, a light customer service and no frills. But is that really so dark? I don't know, that's kind of what budget airlines do. Eventually, in most cases you get what you pay for and if you want better service, you will have to choose more expensive full service carriers like Singapore Airlines. And believe me, they really are the pure opposite of Scoot, as you can see in this Singapore Airlines business class review on a brand new A350.